What's going on guys, Carmine here, and last month I did a top 5 shows I thought could dethrone, or at least challenge Game of Thrones, for its number 1 spot on television. And while I stick by those picks, you guys reminded me there are still other shows out there in development that could also challenge it as well. And I agree. So welcome to part 2 where we'll be looking at 5 more shows coming out that could, if not dethrone or challenge Thrones, stand on the same stage with it. Granted, even though these shows may not be able to knock it off from that number 1 spot, they still deserve some recognition. Fair warning though, unlike the last video, these will be dished out in no particular order, but I still feel like these are 5 awesome series that do deserve a mention nonetheless. And speaking of awesome, I want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, War Robots. In this action-packed multiplayer third-person shooter, you get to choose from dozens of cool and unique robots to go into big 6v6 team battles all in real time. Choose from a variety of different loadouts and armaments to make yours the best on the field. Personally, I enjoyed the speed and maneuverability of the Cossack, but if tanky firepower is more your style, then try the Lancelot. The game is continuously updated with new robots, weapons, and special holiday events like Christmas and New Year's. Millions of people have already downloaded it on their iOS and Android devices, and if you install it now using my link in the description below, you'll get a bonus of 100 gold and 400,000 silver, plus the Destria robot with its own unique skin and full set of weapons. Sponsors like War Robots really help support the channel, and if you use my link in the description, you'll be helping me out even further by letting them know I sent you. Go download and check out War Robots today, and I'll see you guys on the battlefield. First up, we have Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, this is a thing, and it was the first. It was first reported back in February that Amazon had picked up this and is planning a live-action series, which is still in the early stages of development. Conan the Barbarian, to me at least, is one of those series where it was a thing I saw, but barely any news of it is ever mentioned. That you kind of forget it until someone brings it up, and then you're like, "Oh yeah, that was a thing." This happened to me the other day when a buddy of mine brought up Xena, the warrior princess. You guys remember Xena, right? I haven't heard anybody mention that in years, and it just brought back so many memories of like Lucy Lawless and how the 90s had all these fantasy shows all over the place. And, and that's what Conan the Barbarian is to me. It was a really cool movie series in the 80s that was just good enough to stay in my memory banks, but just barely. And I'm glad to see it getting some life into it beyond indie video games and comic books because... While I enjoyed Arnold Schwarzenegger movies back then, this still does deserve to be relevant in today's popular culture beyond that. It was a fun fantasy adventure that didn't require you to study the material to enjoy it. Don't get me wrong, I love Game of Thrones, but when you jump into it, you're almost overwhelmed at times by the state of everything going on. The characters all know each other and have relationships, rivalries, and so on, and you kind of have to learn the landscape of not just them, but the world as well to get a real grasp of what's going on. But in the Conan series, to my experience, you learn as Conan does. You follow this one guy as he goes around kicking ass, speeding up monsters, saving kingdoms, and doing his own thing. It doesn't require you to pay heavy attention to this, and that I appreciate. I, I just appreciate that aspect of it. When you learn as he does, you kind of figure it out as he does, and it's not just spoon-fed to you. It is what it is, and it's trying not to. It's not trying to be edgy or political, or more than it is. It's a cool popcorn series of movies, which I can respect and enjoy as a as a fun adventure. And it has a cool Thrones connection too. Before anybody, you know, gets on my case for not mentioning it, Jason Momoa, who played Cal Drogo, plays Conan in the reboot. But I just wasn't a fan of it. It wasn't that good. And I, I, I didn't get a sense of a, like a fun time adventure like in the 80s movies with Arnold, who I swear was born to play that role. But ultimately, I am excited to see what Amazon can do with this. And no, before we move on, I'm not going to mention the uh, Conan series in the 90s. We're just, we're just not going to talk about those. Ugh. Next up, we have The King Killer Chronicles, and in the last video, you guys let me have it for not mentioning it. Without giving too much away, the story centers around an innkeeper who is incredibly powerful, and a chronicler, if you will, trying to find out about this man and what his story is. Kind of reminded me of Interview with a Vampire at first, but that's the basic gist of it. Just like Wheel of Time, I wasn't too familiar with this one, but I did hear nothing but good things about it. Then I picked it up last week, and well... I'll save my in-depth review of it for another video, but what I will say is that it almost feels like a role-playing game at first that doesn't quite translate too well into a book, but would feel more comfortable as a television show or miniseries. Don't get me wrong, it was a nice read, and I did kind of enjoy it, and the sense of mystery behind the main character kept me going, but I can definitely see people not liking it for its writing style and the plot that almost seems to go nowhere by the end. If anything, it felt like the author was hyping up his level 50 World of Warcraft character and urging you to stick around for the next book, to which there are two, with a third one on the way, I think. 
but this definitely feels like an epic that would translate better into a video game or a television show, and it just so happens that it will be adapted into one by Showtime, with a movie also on the way. Regardless though, King Killer Chronicles definitely deserves to be on this list, simply from the potential it has. Though I will say, if you do plan on picking up this book, the first 50 pages will really be a good indication of whether or not you stick with it. I say give it a try nonetheless. Next up on the list, we have Halo. If you were a gamer 10 years ago, then chances are you were playing this game with the rest of us. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's set in a future where humanity is forced into a corner by a group of fanatical aliens called the Covenant, hell-bent on activating giant Halo constructs to wipe out all life in the galaxy. Standing in their way is the Super Soldier Master Chief, who must stop the activation of the Halo rings and turn the tide against the Covenant before they destroy humanity. So, pretty much, it's another sci-fi shooter entry, and for good reason, too. Halo is friggin' awesome. When I was a kid, I read all the books, played all the games, had all the toys. I love this series. The story is great, the characters are awesome, and, it, and it's this is kind of bittersweet to say this, but thank God they never made a, a movie about it. With the video game curse going around, I doubt we would have ever seen this on TV if a, if a movie was made and it sucked. And just like most video game adaptations, it's best to tell the story in a 10 hour show rather than a two hour movie. Now, the series is gonna be on Showtime, but, and this is a big but, according to 343 Industries, who's in charge of Halo right now, they say, and I quote, we are excited to navigate these creative waters to bring you something that is both respectful of what you already know and love, but also new, ugh, and, and surprising, and enthralling oh boy here we go first off i don't i don't give a fuck what some halo fanboy channel on youtube spouts off the last two halo games were just not that good three further industries has not done a good job at tackling the series and when i hear it new and surprising i immediately think of the super mario movie from the 90s and how that was new and surprising but this will be on television and with the Master Chief in here the entire time, from what they say, instead of like Luke Cage or some random soldier with the Chief only showing up at the end, <clears throat> I have high hopes for it. And this is Showtime. They normally put out some good content, except for that last season of Dexter. I have no idea what the fuck happened there, but uh, yeah, Showtime, let's go. Give me something good, baby. Give me something good. Next on our list, we have Avatar, The Last Airbender. Now, when I was younger, I did watch a lot of television, obviously Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, but as I grew older, I stopped watching those channels, and around the time I did, Avatar came out, and I missed that train by a year or so. However, even I'm aware, at this moment, of how popular the show is, and, though it's made for kids, I've seen a lot of adults stand by it as well. It's set in a world that draws from Asian aesthetic and style where the ability to bend elements of earth, fire, and water, and air are possible. A young boy must master all these elements to stop the Fire Nation's onslaught against all other countries. Now, my first taste of this was the awful M. Night Shyamalan movie, which alienated even hardcore fans, but Netflix is coming out with its own adaptation, and I'm actually excited to see this. Funny thing is, when it comes to a big budget, on location type show, Netflix knows what they're doing, or I think they did know what they were doing? Marco Polo, which I really liked, had a budget of over $100 million, and it had some beautiful on location filming, and so much thought put into it. Imagine a 10 episode adaptation with all that put into it that they gave it to Marco Polo, but I will say that when it comes to CGI, I'm not too sure Netflix can handle it, at least in the television format. I'm sure they could with the movie, but it does really depend. I'm so used to them putting out dramas or action shows that don't depend heavily on special effects, so we'll just have to see. But I'm sure people will tell me to go watch the cartoon, and trust me, I tried, I just could not get into it. Maybe because it is a cartoon, but it just doesn't have that appeal to me, unfortunately. But I am aware of how good it is, trust me, I'll take your word for it. You don't need to skewer me in the comments section. But, like I said, despite being a kid's show, I still feel like it deserves a spot on this list nonetheless. Let's just hope Netflix gives the source material some respect, more so than they gave Death Note. And before we get into the final entry on the list, here are two honorable mentions that I had to give a shout out to and that you guys in the previous video in the comment sections let me know is actually a thing. First being a Dread television show and another adaptation of Stephen King's The Dark Tower. So, with Dread, 
I was not aware that this was a thing, but I'm kind of glad it is. I love the original 90s movie with Sylvester Stallone, it was campy and cheesy, but I also really liked the 2012 movie which stars Game of Thrones' Lena Headey. I always felt that Dread, like Conan the Barbarian, was one of those obscure series that mainstream audiences don't really know about, and I felt like it was tricky to get into because it doesn't have that brand recognition, which is why I'm kind of glad we're getting something with it. But even so, if it does get made, I doubt it'll make some waves. The second movie back in 2012 was actually not bad, but you barely hear about it from anybody, so I feel like the reputation it doesn't have kind of buries it under all the crap being put out daily. As for the Dark Tower series, I was not a fan of the movie they dished out last year. It, it was just not that good, and I wasn't aware that they were making a series about it. And the Dark Tower series is one of those things that, if it's on the wrong network, it could suck. And I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. If you give the right material, or even mediocre material, to the wrong network or company, it could fuck it up even more. Just look at Under the Dome, another Stephen King novel stretched out into three seasons on a television show. Like, why? Why would you even do that? If anything, a 13-episode season could easily cover that book, but they just wanted to milk the Stephen King brand. And that's my problem with any shows made from books. You gotta take each book into a season, at least 13 episodes. You can't stretch it out like that, and some networks don't understand it. Take Haunting of Hill House. The first season was good, but I keep hearing stories that they're gonna try and make it into, like, a second season, which I don't know how you're gonna do that, but there you go. I feel like The Dark Tower would probably work best on HBO since they have experience with it, but it was bought out by Amazon, so we'll have to see what happens, and hopefully they can clean up with the movie ruined. And last on our list, we have The Chronicles of Narnia, and I absolutely love this series. It's such a fun fantasy adventure, and the first movie was just so amazing, and I would argue that it's one of the best book adaptations I've ever seen. I normally don't gravitate towards this type of high fantasy story, but something about that first movie just really got to me. It was just done so well, and it had such a great atmosphere, and the cast was also very charming. It... it I don't know, it just had a lot going for it. Now, this will be on Netflix, and like I said before, I don't know if Netflix is up to the task of handling a series like this that requires a lot of CGI and special effects, and out of all the other entries on this list, I think Narnia does have the best chance, or the better chance, of stepping up to Game of Thrones and knocking it down from its number one spot in the fantasy category. But it is a long shot. Narnia appeals to the whole family, while Thrones, not so much. So we could have more people flocking to Narnia, but that wouldn't exactly make it better. Keep that in mind. This show also has the reputation of the movies, which, if we're going by the first one, was good, but the second and third ones were written off as just random sequels nobody really cared about, and I kind of agree. The first movie could have been a nice one-off, but they instead, they wanted to ride that Harry Potter slash book adaptation wave that the mid-2000s was known for, you know? But considering the tone Netflix has set with Lost in Space, which was a family-friendly adventure that I did enjoy, I can see Narnia coming in here with that tone as well, and it can work. Although if they don't have Liam Neeson come back as Aslan, then you've kind of already lost me, but hopefully Netflix can nail this down and do it some justice. Well guys, that's it for today, but let me know what you thought of my list, and also be sure to let me know if I missed anything or something you would like to see adapted, because I did see a lot of you guys comment all these books you'd like to see as their own series. And before I end this, I just wanted to address one thing in the previous video regarding The Witcher. A lot of you guys in the comment section had some major issues with what you've seen so far from Netflix and their adaptation, and I do want to cover those issues in its own video, because... Obviously, it is too much to go through here, and as a big Witcher fan, which I can't begin to describe how big of a fan I am of The Witcher, I feel like nobody on YouTube has really tapped into the root of the problem with the adaptation, and I want to go into it from my perspective, and fair warning, we will be discussing a lot of stuff that is, uh, I guess, you would call controversial, such as race, politics, culture, and so on. So if you're interested, look forward to that video. But guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Have a good one.